Oh. oh, how does everybody do who is not watching an ad? Anybody not watching an ad is watching this. If they are watching this. Not a great song. Nope. Nope. Some of them are better than others. Oh, how are things for people who are here? There's only a couple of you here. It's okay. We do the show, whether people come or not. Pinnell's here. I saw Pinnell. No, I doesn't. I was not live 17 minutes ago. It did? Tim says it did say that? What? I don't know why it would say that. I scheduled it 17 minutes ago, but I scheduled it for now. Huh. Well, then YouTube did a thing again. Whatever. I'll be, I'll, you know what, I, that's fine. I was 17 minutes late, I guess. I've... <laughs> oh, whatever. <sighs> Tyler said, Lee, got a Lee Valley ad. Hey, right on. At least since it was relevant, it's something inappropriate. Is it, was it the one that's a, what's the difference between a Lee Valley tool and another tool? Well, when you buy a Lee Valley spade, something about, it lasts forever. I don't, it's, it's, there's something. Oh, it's the block of wood with that. It's a, yeah, a block of wood is not just a block of wood but a possibility of what might be or something something like that it said going live at xx28 well it was lying because we all know what time this starts yeah that one yeah the block of wood is not just a, i can actually do the lee valley voice do you see that a block of wood is not just a block of wood. And I see now I'm trying too hard. You good, my friend? I'm okay. I had a week. I mean, we all had a week. I, uh... It's been, been a busy week. I was... I was at the shop at the Crow's Nest every day this week. Doing one thing or another. And I'm going to be there again tomorrow teaching... And I'm going to be there again on Monday, uh, helping grind down, grind all the paint off a garage door and then repainting it. I'm going to do like eight days in a row of being, not work, like full days of work, but being at work eight days in a row. I'm supposed to work three days a week. But I did a paint night this week, and uh, on Monday, what did I, why was I in on Monday? I was in for something on Monday. It was only a couple hours of time, but it felt like I was there a lot, because I was there every day. Um, Tuesday, I was practicing the painting that I was going to teach on Wednesday night. And then Wednesday, I was teaching the class. The painting class and then obviously working thursday friday saturday um, i don't remember what i went down for on monday i went down for some reason on monday whatevs and then yeah teaching turn pen turning tomorrow which we gotta we gotta just prep some blanks but let's just get to that part and then and then i like i've started my beer but I basically just turn and scrap into pen blanks. 
I just want to have I want to have a, a few options for everybody tomorrow. So let's break down a piece of cherry and a piece of walnut and a piece of sapili and these pre-purchased blanks will mark and break down to tube size. Purple heart, paduk. So I'll have I'll have cherry, walnut, sapili, purple heart, and paduk for people to choose from for class tomorrow. Uh, the the Laguna is down at the shop already, uh, as is the new Rikon 70-100 that Nadia bought. I was down there last night setting it up. Um, looks like a nice machine. It's not, it's not a variable speed. It's a belt change. Uh, but I don't change speeds that often. Especially like during pen turning, you're like, you're either spinning it as fast as it'll go or you're spinning it slower than that to sand it. So it'll be like one belt change per person. Not that big a deal. Let's chop up some wood over on the bandsaw. My table saw, I normally I do it on my table saw, but my table saw still has a really heavy ass granite lathe on it. Um, and some guitar parts and things. So we'll do it on the bandsaw tonight. Just get things knocked down to size and marked and taped into pen bundles. <sighs> Let's do that real quick. I'm hot actually. It's warm here now, just suddenly. Come on. Come on over to the bandsaw. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at that. I got light over here and everything. Piece of sapili. It's about as long as it needs to be. Get my width. Loud noises? Well, not that loud. It's bandsaw. Look at me. Being safety. So that has a foot break. 
Bandsaw is not anywhere near the top of the list in terms of upgrades. <laughs> but when I do, it will absolutely be one that has a foot brake. Let's start by chopping this down a little bit.
So we got we got our walnut, cherry, sapili, paduke, purple heart. Walnuts, Healy, Cherry, Purple Heart, Paduke, Blanks. Let's, let's make them tube size. Well, let's sit down and we'll mark them first. Oh, yeah. How's everybody doing this week? What did I miss? Bennett's here. I'm always double safe. Eye protection and a push stick. That's right. That's right. Look at me. Um, the bandsaw is the only powered saw that I have ever put my finger in. So, when things get little, I try to do the push stick. It's the only powered saw. Did I have to qualify that? Have I ever put my finger in a non-powered saw? No, maybe. Have I ever had my hand on the wrong side of a... It might be the only saw that I've ever touched. I've, I've chisel, I've done chisels. I've done, uh, like cutting guy gauges and marking knives and stuff. Uh, lathe chisels. Cut myself on wood. <laughs> I've never, the only saw that I've ever cut myself on was the bandsaw, I think. I think he's making pen blanks. I am making pen blanks. I'm making pen blanks, and then I'm breaking the pen blanks into halves, tube-sized bits for the class tomorrow. So, just going to mark these. I'm, I'm warm. I might take my sweater off. What shirt am I wearing? Oh, can't tell. My beard's in the way. I don't know why it matters. I don't care what you guys think about my shirt. <laughs> I'm just going to go like this on my pen blanks so that when I cut it, they can go back together on the pen mandrel and be continuous green. Mm -hmm. Just so we know where the middle is, so that things run consistently from one end to the next. Uh, you guys don't want to tell me how you're doing this week? Is it a secret? We don't have secrets here, okay? We're all supposed to be friends. We're not supposed to keep secrets from each other. And cherry. It's a much quicker, slicker operation on the table saw. I haven't found the line to be helpful by the time it's turned, sanded, and polished. So it's only helpful for it to go on the pen mandrel so that they're both, they're facing the right way. 
so that the back is still the back and the front is still the front. It, and it's really, it doesn't really matter for blanks this plain anyway. It's more a best practice for like complex pen blanks where you want things to match up in the middle. If things don't match up in a, in the middle at a, on a cherry pen, it's not the end of the world. But it's just a thing that I always do. Had a great Saturday. Had a bonfire to clean up some brush and roasted hot dogs and had s'mores with some of that. Some of that, wait, what was it? Black spruce? That tree that came down in your yard? You're you're burning your child your your children's childhood memories again instead of making them furniture out of them. Doing a motor swap. Oh well. That's it's intense. Mikey B's doing the motor swap in his his Traxxas Everest Mark Six. Type 4, Laredo. Makes sense. What, what makes sense? Oh, the line thing? Yeah, it's just a grain consistency thing, which is almost irrelevant in the type of blanks that I'm making right now. I guarantee you, if you put this on, if you, instead of putting the line in the middle, if one of them got flipped around on the other one and you turned it, nobody would ever know. <laughs> but best practice is best practice. And four tornadoes come through just north of me on Thursday. That sounds like too many tornadoes. Yep, that's accurate. I think four is too many. But at least they came through just north of you and not you. Like, four tornadoes is not too many if they're over there. Well, it's not, it's too many for anybody over there. These are all things that I'm saying. Let's, um, so yeah, those are all things that I'm saying. <laughs> Four tornadoes <laughs> isn't too many if they're over there. No, it still is. Yeah, no, it still is. <laughs> I'm not going to get stop blocky. I was going to do stop block, but like, it's not that important. That's plenty accurate enough. Um, I don't bump.
This is riveting content for YouTube. This is why I make the big bucks on YouTube, because of content like this. If you want to support what I do, you can head over to patreon.com slash wooden things and stuff. To support the creation of riveting content like this. <laughs> it's work that needs to get done and it needs to get done by tomorrow so you guys get to enjoy it Okay, it'll be more fun here in a couple minutes. Once I get these all taped together in their little bundles, we'll talk about nonsense. me it's not even the it's not even the Tuesday actually make and stuff show it's not really making anything I guess I'm I'm making ten blanks Hold on. What's going on? Why did you... 
Be able to hit. Oh, there we go. Why they never go through down down? Because nobody wants to go down down. Not even, not even tornadoes want to go down down. This is why we all wait for the second hour to hit that thumbs up. Because <laughs> the first hour always sucks. Tim, where do you keep finding those strange tools? Tim, um, Tim lives in a in an area that is rife with strange tool dealers, and the the history of American woodworking is rich in Tim's region. You could probably just like walk down the street and find like a pre war Stanley Number no. Four just like sitting on the sidewalk. Like getting rained on and shit. Tim's about 20 minutes from me is an antique tool store that used to be a hardware store. The owner goes to auctions and estate sales. Also, he knows Jim Bodie. There you go. Several woodworkers and famous tool guys. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> But, like, that whole Northeast, though, is, like, I would think that it would be safe to call it, like, the homestead. That's not the right word. The, uh, keystone of, like, American furniture craftsmanship historical it's a lot of people who made furniture and did woodworking in America came from that area throughout history like I said you could like there's there's probably tools in antique toolboxes like like treasure chests on the beach that you could find maps for like in old children's stories where there's an X on the map and it was a pirate booty. Name four of them. Name four a uh, like historical craftsmen from the Northeast United States. Uh, George Chippendale, Henry. Chippendale? Why well, I don't remember. Oh, I don't know why I can't remember his first name. Uh, George Nakashima, I believe, is from up that direction. He's more modern. Um, but let's go with um, James Federal, the pioneer of the federal style of furniture making. Um, with all its intake is inlays and stuff. Um, Henry Windsor, the winds of the famous Windsor chair maker. Um, Mike Pekovich. Currently still making furniture out there. William T. Ikea? No, he's not American, unfortunately. Jimmy Duresta? Yeah, but he, I think what, what we're looking for... I, I don't know, like, I'm not... I, I don't know a ton of... Um, Krenov was from California, I think. So that would be one from not there. Um... Oh, what are like? I, we could get into one of those like internet chat room battles and just be like, "Google it, idiot! I'm right." Do your own research. <laughs> it is accurate to say that, like the well, the heart of everything American, really, 
that's where they start, like the, the colonials, the colonizers landed up there and then came outwards. So that it makes sense that that's where the start of American furniture craftsmanship began. James Shaker, don't forget James Shaker, who obviously Shaker Furniture. Thomas Chippendale, pretty sure. I don't know why, pretty sure it's Thomas. That's actually a, actually a, a famous American craftsman. Not just male strippers or uh, heroic chipmunks. Anyway, that's <laughs> enough of that. I'm just going to tape these together into their little two packs. Well, we keep talking about random things. What do you guys want? I could name a fair number of current, like modern furniture makers from up that direction. I already said Mike Pekovich. Uh, Jimmy Duresta doesn't really make furniture, does it? Does he? He probably does. Um, Tim Russo, one of the masters of uh, contemporary American furniture, is up in Maine, I think. Uh, Christian Bexford, I believe, is also in Maine. He's up in that area. Uh, do, 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 do. One of the best current tool makers in the United States by the name of Thomas Lee Nielsen is up in that general vicinity. There's our friend Tim Timothy Mallon from TM Woodworking, who's up that way. Spagnuolo is from New Jersey. It's true, but he's been not there longer than he was there at this point, I think. Just taping these guys into their little two pack. Shannon Rogers. Is uh, near Boston somewhere. Or no, near Baltimore. Maryland. He's in Maryland. How did the class go? The painting class? It went okay. There were too many people in it. Um, the room that I teach painting in uh, 14 people on 16 by 20 canvases is, I would say three too many. But everybody had a good time. The painting was successful. Everybody got through it. The results were good. Is that the guy that sends stickers to his Patreons? Yes, Shannon Rogers. I I wanted to I want to I'm gonna message him and be like, this is a conversation that happened. I called you I called you one of the standards of American furniture craftsmanship, modern American furniture craftsmanship on my show. 
and mentioned your name. And someone asked if that's the guy who sends out stickers to his Patreons. That's what you'll go down in history as being, Shannon. The guy who sends out stickers to his Patreons. Stickers about wood. And if there's any legacy to leave behind, sending stickers about wood out to your Patreon peoples, it's not a bad one, I guess. It's a date night type thing. It, it Some people use it as that. I've got a few couples who consistently come to those paint nights as their sort of monthly, well, I don't know if they only, I don't know if they only go on a date once a month, but uh, once a month I see them on date night for that paint night, yeah. There's two, at least two couples that I see regularly. No, well, one that I see regularly and another that comes sometimes. But lots of singles, lots of olds. <laughs> Not lots of olds. I think actually the average age of the paint nights is probably not that much older than me. Probably like 50. Yeah, no, it might be about, <laughs> come to think of it, it might be younger than me, the average. I forget that I'm old sometimes because I don't really feel it a lot of days. Some days I do. A lot of olds. <laughs> there's always a few olds, but there's often a few youngs to balance it out. Yeah, average is probably about my age, early 40s. Oh, and they're fun. They're they're a fair bit of work. Trying to get. Oftentimes, most of the people who are coming, oftentimes, most of the people, yeah, that's accurate. Often, most of the people who come have never painted anything before, let alone a, a landscape oil painting. So sometimes it can be challenging to get uh, a substantial size group of people through a landscape, an oil painting in two hours. Depending on the complexity of the painting and the acuity of the participants, it can be a challenge. Might be a bit disposable income thing. Well, I mean, that's obviously part of it. Like, not everybody can drop. Especially, like, well, but I mean, if you think about it, I think they're like 68 bucks or something like that each. Um, so it's for two of you to come on a date, just round it up to 150. Like, that's... You're not getting out of a decent restaurant for under that on a date night. I mean, I guess that decent is relative. And are you adding a bottle of wine to your bill or, you know, et cetera. But a couple hours of of artistic entertainment and maybe gaining a new skill and maybe making some new friends and getting hang getting to hang out with me it's like that's that's pretty good value oh a couple more i'm sick of this already the boring part of pen turning. Blank prep. It's the boring part of teaching pen turning as well. 
But no, everybody gets all of the choices. Except I have four students and only three of them could pick Purple Heart if they wanted to. But I'm actually kind of surprised how few people choose Purple Heart when they're when I'm giving them the options at the beginning of the class. But only three of them could possibly pick it. Oh, wait. No, that one's already got tubes in it. That'll be somebody's backup. If they if they pick Purple Heart and they blow it apart on the on the lathe, I always have some that are prepped already with tubes that we can just fire up a new one for them. So that hopefully everybody can walk away with a pen at the end of this. Thought the class would be more. Uh, I don't think so. I think it, that's right. I don't know. I've never paid for one. I don't know. You could go to thecrowsnestgallery.com and go into art classes tab. And the one that I did this week might actually still be at the top. It started. It goes down, it's chronological, but sometimes they're still up for a couple of days and they just say completed. Go walnut times four. Wait, that is not walnut at all. Walnut times, I'm sure I did four. Oh, I didn't, one's back behind you guys. Walnut times four, cherry times four, paduke times four, sapili times seven, purple heart times three. That is enough prepping for today. Eight, eight sapilis. Oh, oh, that would suck. I'm going to double check. Oh, didn't leave myself that much extra. Woo. That's, that's pretty tight. I would like to leave myself a little bit more space than that. Oh, well, some of them are better. Oh, some of those are, are pretty close. <laughs> Should have used the stop block, idiot. Just did an eyeball and a line on the miter gauge. Beer. <sighs> All right. Blanks prepped most of my stuff already down at the shop. Was slowly shimmying it down there this week. Um, mandrel chucks. One of my sets of carbide tools is down there already. My press is down there already. My sandpaper's down there already. Yeah. Most of what I need is already down there. So, what else can we talk about? <sighs> Penel, you find out about any any bands this week? Did you discover any new bands? A 
I'm taking this off. I'm off. Let's find out what shirt I'm wearing. Oh, it's the Adam Starpin tool. Add Adam Adam Starpin tool. Oh, there's a Dewalt logo. I'm, I'm, I'm rocking Dewalt logos. Oh, I got I got Dewalt and McKee. Hashtag not sponsored. DeWalt and Makita now both owe me money. You, uh, the DeWalt slash Makita rep, you can reach out to me at uh, woodenthingsandstuff at gmail.com and I will let you know where to send that check. Or you, know, you probably are sophisticated enough to do like direct deposit, like an e-transfer. Oh, there you go. There's another one. I am going to make so much money tonight. I think that's how that works, right? Like if you show off brand logos and stuff like they pay you I'm pretty I think hasn't worked so far but maybe one day I don't have a single Makita anything so that that one probably won't send them an invoice I totally should I should you know what I should I should just send invoices out Every time I mention a tool company, I'll just send them an invoice and just see if anybody pays it. Be funny if they did. There is a, you know what? There is a chance that that just goes through to like payments, the payments department or whatever. And it says like episode 493, Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. One hundred and twenty-seven fifty, and it just it, it gets processed because nobody checks whether or not that's a person they're supposed to be paying. It could happen. I call myself like ambassador. I'll give myself an ambassador number. Be like ambassador number four seven three eight two. There's a guy who did that to Google. Good for him. I'm proud of that guy. Just sent them an invoice and they paid it? Because that's rad. <laughs> I kind of like that. The invoice was small enough that nobody checked it. I like it. But did he just do it once or did he do it like a whole bunch of times so he actually like made decent money? Because it's a better story if he sent them like a thousand invoices for like $4.83 or $7.12 or whatever, just like thousands of them, like one a month. That's a long time to do that for. What's a thousand months? That's too long. <laughs> I'm not a math guy, but did something tells me that one person would not be able to do that for a thousand months in a row. I'm going to have myself a cigarette. Get some air going in here. It's actually pretty warm. Man, I'm not looking forward to summer. I do think that I should start thinking and budgeting for during the shop reno. The possibility, I should start planning for the possibility that I do want to put a mini split in here.
because I feel like by the time the renovation happens, it's going to be really easy to talk myself into putting a mini split in here if I have the money to do it. Sorry, I stepped away from what my desk girlfriend just got home and I wanted to see her. So what you're saying is that she's more important than me? Like, don't you see her every day? You see me once a week. Okay. Like that hurts, man. shop reno it's it's happening it's happening my friend i already got the paint and the lights and the long like telescoping roller thing for the ceiling Someone in my old job did that. Submitted invoices for payments from fake companies that went to his bank account, and he approved them, and accounting paid it. I think he's out of jail now. <laughs> I do, but I also see you every day. She bought your bathing suit 2020 calendar off Fleabay. I would, I would be very surprised if that was a thing that exists. These days, there is always the possibility that, oh, please, God, don't. I should not say it out loud, but I will. With the AI and all that stuff, there's it, it would be a very real possibility that you could AI generate a Mike's Wooden Things and stuff, swimsuit, calendar. There's enough of my face on the internet at this point i think that it might be able to do that i don't know i'm not an ai guy or know how much information what the data set is that's required for something um damn i really hope that's not a thing that ever happens if there's a swimsuit edition calendar i want it to be actually me not fake pretend AI me. <laughs> Make a poster. There you go. You and you put it up over your bed or whatever you need to do. Know any IT types? I think a few of you jerks are IT types, aren't you? Pinnell's already working on it. He said he's he's gonna go make a make a go of it. He'll see what he can do, and then he'll he'll make some kind of spreadsheet calculations of some kind, and then enter it into some AI bot thing. And then he'll, what did he say? He'll post it on Reddit. Yeah, put it on the, in the Mike's, uh, the Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff subreddit. So exclusive to, no, what you should do is you should just send it to me and then I'll give it to the Patreon supporters. And that'll be like exclusive Patreon benefit. <laughs> that sounds like a fantastic Patreon benefit, doesn't it? I'm warming up to this idea. Because <laughs> I'm fun. Oh. Okay, so. Just a, a little bit of a PSA. 
even small lathes, if they are quality lathes, even the small ones are pretty damn heavy. I did a little bit, I did a little bit of something to my back last night, moving lathes around at the shop. I'm actually, I'm going to leave that open for a bit. Uh, small, even I took the tails, I took the bed extension off my 1216 to make it lighter. I took the tail stock off when I was moving it. Like a hundred and whatever pounds that is not nothing to be heaving around. I just set up the Rikon and then move it into the closet because there's a party happening in the room that I teach in tonight. There's a party happening before I go in and teach in there tomorrow. So I had to get it out of the way. So I was moving my, my 1216 and the Rikon 7100. 7, uh, even, even little lathes are not... Maybe I'm just old and weak. I feel like I'm not really that old and weak, though. I don't know. Does anybody else think that 100 and, let's say, 120 probably pounds, like lifting and moving 120 pounds is like no, no biggie? You passed the halfway point. You don't know that. I mean, yeah, no, I absolutely am, but like, maybe not. You gotta be ready for it, but 120 isn't bad. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's part of it, is just like the awareness that this is the heavy ass thing because it it's heavier than it should be for how big it is you know what i mean like you look at it and you're like nah, it's 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 dece it's deceptively heavy i guess is the issue it's also heavier on one side than the other side and there aren't really good places to grab the rikon has got a cool it's got a little handle on the one side which is nice that i found late in the game um there, yeah, the Rikon's got like a little flip-up handle on the headstock part. I move wood stoves at work. It sucks most of the time. I can't see it ever not sucking, my friend. I can't see you ever being like, sweet! Yay! We get to move wood stoves! <laughs> like... <coughs> most of the time. Depends what it is. Other, some things are better to carry than others. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. I could probably do a 120 pound chunk of wood or a couple of, couple of chunks of wood that weighed 120 pounds. Eh, maybe. I don't know. I, I think it's just deceiving how heavy a small thing like that is because <laughs> it looks like it shouldn't be that mad, like that bad, but 120 pound barbell isn't bad. See, a thing that's designed to be lifted. A little bit of a different story than a lathe, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Maybe not. In any case, if hypothetically you were unaware, even small lathes, if they are built of quality, it wouldn't be built of quality. If they are quality built, yeah, you missed a comment again. All right, let me just change the thing. I gotta go live chat. There we go. What did I miss? Hold on. It's not well balanced. Yes. Hey, Mike, what's the chirpy noise? I hear a crow. 
don't hear any chirping. It's possible that there's some chirping happening. We do live in an environment where there are sometimes birds. Ooh. Is that chirpy noise? I, that was a bird. <laughs> or are you talking about the creaky on the seat? That, the one that I can do on purpose? That's my shop stool. <laughs> That's in pristine condition. It's a cheap garbage Canadian tire, like bolt together shop stool. It is now that you mention it, it's a little annoying now that I notice it. Thanks. Damn it, Mike. Quality craftsmanship, nothing but the best from Canadian Tire. And they, the, un, the unthread too, it's like Allen Key. And they, and they just, they constantly like unthread and like. I gotta constantly tighten them up. WD-40. I, I'm not that bothered. It's going to bother you guys more than it's going to, well, I don't know. Now, now that I noticed it, it's going to bother me too. So, but I don't think it's that kind of creak. I think it's like the wood, the wood on wood kind of a creak. Because poor joinery. Whoever made this stool should take a furniture making lesson. They don't care. But they, they, whoever made this stool did not care. They're getting paid four cents a day or something to make these things. Maybe a little more than that, but beer. Probably not going to go super long tonight. I do want to get a decent night's sleep and wake up and make sure that I have everything loaded up to go down to the shop to teach. Full class again tomorrow. A brand new lathe. Two quality lathes rocking tomorrow. Four students. Should be fun. And then I got my first two signups just the other day for the upcoming um, rotary tool carving class. So I should get practicing. I'm going to make like necklace pendants. I don't know if you guys remember the little necklace pendant thing that I was working on to create a class for. I will have, I think I'm probably just going to offer maybe three different designs. Or they go like free form and just like have fun carving once they learn the basics of how the tool operates and somebody's making something good drum sander money uh, no but uh, maybe maybe eventually I don't, it's not as high on the list as it, it's a spatial thing. It may be, we'll see when the renovation happens, whether I end up with any additional space. Drum sander will be before bandsaw upgrade. 
Um, yeah. Didn't you use a fret saw to make that? I used a fret saw for the outside of it. I did like I cut it on the I did the inside part and then I cut around the outside with a fret saw on a little bird's mouth. <coughs> I gotta make a couple of those for that class too. A little bird's mouth. Things that attach to the bench to get it up so you can Right, remember? So that you can do this with your You absolutely could do most of this with a fret saw. I did not. I only did the outside. Hey, Paul. Hey, oh, I didn't see Paul. Hey, Paul, how are you? Why travel? Hello, hello. That's a new name. I'll tell you why travel. Because it gives you a new outlook on the world. If you travel correctly. I haven't done a lot of traveling. I shouldn't I talk like I'm some kind of... Every time I've traveled, I have appreciated something else in the world that I didn't appreciate before. I would use a scroll saw. You could do that too. I used a Dremel, essentially, for almost all of it. And it just fret sawed the out, around the outside of it. I did use essentially a drill press. I used a Dremel in a dr dr essentially a drill press fixture to mark my points where I wanted to have my lines before I started carving away with the the saber tooth bits. The full time RV and just travel the whole country. It must be nice. It's nice to see how the other half lives. <laughs> Full-time RV traveler. That sounds rad. I would miss my shop. But yeah, that would that would that would be rad. I was trying to figure out how you freehanded that. Well, I drew it onto, I made my, my blank out of three laminations of wood. And then I just, I drew it on and then I poked out the, essentially the corners with the drill press. And then I just like, just carved it away with a little spinny. This guy mainly, okay, was... Mainly this guy did most of the work on that. <coughs> Just bought some property in Arizona and bought a small 12 by 16 turning shop. Sweet. Sweet. Cut saw. Nope, they are saber tooth, but same idea. got a couple of them. I'm going to get a couple more. It's fun. It's not... I couldn't see myself doing it, like, as a thing that I spend a lot of time doing. But, like, I could see myself incorporating some small power carving elements into some things. Moving forward, some sort of like little relief carving bits, like on top, on a little like little pop of some carving on a box top or something like that. I could see being pretty cool. Just waiting on my crappy hand-me-down soldering gun to warm up. Just, just oh, you can't drive probably. I was gonna say you just come get mine, We're like.
or just go buy them. Like, they're not that expensive. I got my soldering gun, with it, and it's, it's pretty good. I think it was 40 bucks. Maybe 60 bucks. I don't know. Wagner? Nope. Don't remember. Orange. It's an orange brand. Our RV has a small toy hauler compartment, so you can prep all your blanks on the go wherever you want. Yeah, that'd be rad. That's like uh, um, Carl Jacobson has like a little like he he goes around on tours in his little like pull behind trailer thing that he's got his whole shop in like and then he's got like a flip up window and he can turn like in the trailer and have just like I tried carving a few branches with cut saw bits it cut but I'm no carver I don't I wouldn't claim to be a carver either but I'm gonna try and I know enough about how to work with wood to be able to instruct people. After I do a few more of them, it's not, I mean, I'm not an oil painter. I would never claim that I'm like, but I, I do teach oil painting classes because I can get the information across because I know enough. I know more than they do and I can get the information across. And I can help them get through it. That's all you need to do to be a, be a teacher. Is know more than the person you're teaching. And be able to transfer that information. Only carving I do is wood spirits. I'm, I'm going to do some hand carving. That's another one of the things that I'm going to... You, you reminded me, the wood spirits reminded me that I do have these guys. I've got these kits. The Beavercraft wizard carving kit I'm going to try. Looks like fun. Oh shit, it's working well now that it's not minus 10 outside. Yeah, it got nice today, hey? Like, this was actually hot in my shop today when I got in here. If I send you a shop sticker, are you going to put it up on something? Yeah. It'll be, if it's not enormous, I've still got bandsaw room. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with the lumber industry update wood ID stickers because they're pretty big. But I'm going to put Shannon's lumber industry update sticker on bandsaw and then I still have room for I don't know three or four more without that getting cluttered right now I've got TP guitars custom creations country road workshop and then I'll have the wood industry update and I'll have a wall drip guitars should make my own probably to put on there as well It's telly shape. Oh yeah, well of course it is. I saw you tag me in that because it's funny. Why wouldn't it be? If it was any other shape, it would be false advertising. And I would call you out for it. I had an idea in my head, but what I ended up with didn't match what I had imagined. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to woodworking. <laughs> I've done a couple of birdhouse spirit faces. Birdhouse spirit face sounds cool. I don't, I can't get a picture of what that is in my head, but it sounds cool. And yet Paul's logo on his chat is a Strat style guitar. Is it? It's so small, I can't tell. You could, uh, look. you guys, you guys is. Like, dots are so small. It's called letting the wood talk to you. It's 
just you, sometimes the wood is going to do what it's going to do and you just have to play along for sure. You only have so much control over an organic material when you're working with it. Yeah, that was a guitar that I can neighborhood kids paint. It hurts my brain when people say things like that. That I can neighborhood can kids paint and it was donated to the wounded warriors to auction off it's a guitar that i can neighborhood kids paint i'm gonna guess it was a guitar that you made that you got neighborhood kids to paint so that it would be auctioned off I had the neighborhood kids paint it. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Whew. You guys wonder why I stumble over stuff like that? Look. Read it back. It's me, Bobbert. Hello, Kaduk. Kaduk Bobbert. I'm here to make a difference in your life. I would appreciate that, Robert. Uh, what kind of, is it going to be a positive difference? <laughs> no, no. Paul painted the neighborhood kids to look like the guitar. That's okay. That, that makes a little bit more sense. He made the guitar, and then as part of the auction, it was like, if I reach this much in fundraising, I will paint the neighborhood kids. I like that. And then he just, he, he rented one of those, uh, like siding paint, like a paint gun with big compressor thing. And he just like walked around the neighborhood in the summer when the kids were out playing and stuff. And he just like walked around and just like painted kids, just dragging the compressor and the, hose and stuff behind them. I think that that sounds fun. I might donate to that. And I am not a wealthy man. I might chip in on that fundraiser. I mean, obviously you would have to, you would have to record it for to prove to your donors that it was a thing that you did. Like when uh, Scotty Chili Man Custom Creations was raising money for some mental health organization. And he was like, if I get this many dollars, I'll shave my head live on Instagram. And if I get this many dollars, I'll shave my head live on Instagram. And then my kids will dump a bucket of slime on me. And then the next step should have been, if I make this much money, I'll shave my head live on Instagram. My kids will dump slime on me. And then I'll walk around the neighborhood with a paint gun and just paint the neighbor's kids. I would donate. burp with a mouthful of beer and so I had to burp and then I had to get the burp from the back of the throat out the nose while the mouth was full of beer and it was awkward and that's my story of what just happened there I don't know why I thought I had to explain that to you but I thought maybe you could tell that I just got, suddenly got very uncomfortable <laughs> Lisa today at work. I don't even remember what she said. Um, oh, a song came on. And she said, oh, I, I saw this guy. 
um, I saw this guy in concert. He opened for somebody else. Actually, she said I, he supported somebody else because she's British and they say things wrong. So it, when she says oh, this, this guy supported a, con a, a concert, it's like the opening act. So she said, like, uh, he supported so-and-so. And that was the story. So she's like, oh, no, I saw this guy. Uh, he supported so-and-so. And then it just hung out in the air and nobody was saying anything. So what came out of my mouth was, well, that was a really good story. Because <laughs> it felt like somebody needed to acknowledge that she'd said something. But there wasn't really any reason to. Like, there wasn't... Like, nobody was going to be like, wow. Or, like, well, you're so lucky that you saw that concert. Because they were shit musicians, first of all. Um, and so... Oh, Mike, that was a really good story. I deserve that. Try using the drink smoker on your beer. What's the drink smoker? Oh, like a, like a whiskey smoker? I don't have one of those. You're such a kind man. It felt like something, like, it, you know how when somebody says something and then there's just silence and, like, somebody needs to say something to acknowledge that someone else had said something. She said, she said well, that was a really good story. <laughs> That's what I said. Whatever. It was funny. Everybody laughed. So... I don't even remember who it was. It was like, like Afro Man or something. And he like, he was opening for some other shit musician. But he, she said, I'm like, oh yeah, he supported. And it's like, that's how she says like the opening act. Like if, if you go to a Dave Matthew concert or something and the opener is like the Lumineers. She would say that Dave Matthews supported by the Lumineers. Like. I like to go with, huh, that's cool, hey? <laughs> yeah, but how would that work? Hey, I saw that. I saw Afro Man. He opened for, I don't know, Brand, Brand Van 3000 or something. What about there, right? Like, wow, that's cool, hey. It's not. The story gets better the more you explain it. I'm going to punch you right in the throat. Like, when we actually meet, first thing I'm going to do is pop you right in the throat. for being a bad friend. Beer. I have a buddy in a group called the Lupineers. Lupineers? That's a good story. <laughs> Had to be done, I think. I think, yeah, I don't know that there was any other response. Sometimes I only talk to fill the dead space because uh, dead air is terrible. 
and it's uncomfortable. So, um, Pinel, uh, I would like for you to please just uh, eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't McGill there? McGill where? McGill's not here. No, he's coming. I think the end of June. I think he said. I've had opening bands that were incredible. First time seeing Mastodon was them opening for someone crazy. Now to think that they open for others, you would. You gotta think that even the biggest bands in the world, at one point were opening for other bands that were better, bigger than them. I, I don't know that I've seen any opening acts that went on to become big and famous. Did the Riverdales ever get decent size? Saw them open for Counting Crows. I saw, oh, I saw, saw this guy, this, this kid named Ben Harper. Um, he opened for this little up and coming band called Pearl Jam that I saw in Vancouver. I think he did pretty okay for himself, that Ben Harper kid. McGill is in Montreal. Wow, you you and McGill tight? Like I I didn't know McGill was in Montreal. Thought he was taking your painting class this week. The wrong your, okay. Uh, but no, he we were talking about him taking a painting class when he comes out, and how I was going to try to schedule it during the time that he was out. That's not my chair. That's a wheelbarrow going by. That was weird. It's like an old lady walking by with a wheelbarrow full of dirt and plants. The queen used to open for Mott the Hoople. Oh. Can you imagine being able to say that Queen Queen was your opening band? Hopefully downhill. No, she was going the dog. She was going up. She went down empty. I think she went like down to the marsh. Or it's not really a marsh. Uh, there's a stream going through there. And there's a big green belt going through. And I think she's just going and like stealing ferns out of the woods. And like putting them in your yard. Old lady needs to hide. Was, I don't think she was that old. Like, again, I shouldn't talk because she was maybe a decade older than me. <laughs> Good God, take your WD-40 out to her. Nah. We can get her own WD-40. Check your front yard. Maybe your plants are gone. I don't know. They were, like, literally... the. The wheelbarrow that I watched go by was like ferns, like from the forest. Like, I'm sure that she walked down to the green belt with her empty wheelbarrow and loaded up a bunch of like foliage off the forest floor and is bringing it back up to her yard. When she goes by again, give her a spray of WD 40. We'll grab a paint gun. Uh... <laughs> Come on, Mike, lubricate her wheel. Family show, Tim. Yeah, that's old. <laughs> You'll get here too one day if you're lucky, Mike. If I don't murder you. <laughs> 
It, did, yeah, it, wasn't, it didn't even work because I'm not a murderist. Nope, that wasn't it. I raper. That's what it was. Uh, and was it Step Brothers? I think like both know I'm not a raper or a rapist or you no know, a rapist is right. I don't. I can't remember the quote. Demonetize. Bam. Oh, for threatening the audience. I don't know about that. I'm, I'm an hour and 37 in. I think you can do everything, anything you want, basically, after about seven, eight minutes. <laughs> Probably can't, can't, like, actually show murder. Uh, that guy stalled his bike. Uh, don't, just don't go to Canada. Oh, you know, Mike can't come to the U.S. Mike Bennett lives just over there. <laughs> He's the drummer in my band. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Just don't go to Canada because then you're safe. Like, he comes and hangs out in my shop sometimes. <laughs> I pay him to do my yard work, because I don't want to. <laughs> I'm going to smoke again. This is fun. You guys are always the... I, have I mentioned before that you guys are always the favorite part of my week? He's the director of Mike's greatest video of 2024. Mike's greatest video so far of 2024. Thank you very much. And he, he was the director of photography. Oh, somebody's asking where everybody's at. Yeah, let's uh, let's do a review of where everybody's located. Got a an upstate New York. We got Paul Waltrip from Texas. We got Chris Pinnell from Argentina. Um, we got Mike Bennett from just up the street. We got Y Travel from Tucson, Arizona. We got Chris Haywood from Fort McMurray, Alberta, formerly of Kamloops, British Columbia. Back when I was in college and was also in Kamloops, British Columbia, this is my old college roommate who pops in once in a while. Good to see you, my friend. We got Fearsome Warrior Sherburn <laughs> from Minnesota. It's actually it's actually Sherborn, like the like the spy movie. Um, because it has been decreed, Matt. Todd Lajness, who is curtain, currently in Dayton, Ohio. But is often on the road, I believe. Is that why you say currently? Burn like river burn. Nope. It's born. Like the born identity. Like Matt Damon. Matt Damon. <laughs> what is that? Matt Damon. It's, it got, it's the South Park, guys. It's got to be. Matt Damon. It's, it's, I, I, just, I can picture it. Is it the America? Or Team America? Is that where that is? that's from? A 
lived a lot of places with the military. Longest single place was in Japan. Your entire life, the longest you ever lived in one place was Japan? Well, you got any of those fancy, like, Japanese Damascus chisels? Made by a blacksmith up in the mountains in a cave? I was in the Navy also. We, can, we have quite a few military... Uh, Veterans. I was like, why can't I think of the word for ex-military? No, it wasn't into woodworking yet. I think you should you should get them for for historical purposes, life historical purposes. I want a set of those chisels so badly for just for the fact that they are awesome and pretty. And expensive and they were made by an old Japanese dude with a hammer and a fire and I would probably no I would use them I was gonna say I would probably never use them because of how expensive they were but I would absolutely use them in a cave Mike he said Japanese not Tony Stark some of these old, old Japanese woodworker guys, like, I'm exaggerating, but it's not far off. I was in Bremming, Bremerton, Washington. Son-in-law is Japanese, might be able to get some. You can get some just by ordering them. Like, you can, like, they make, like, these dudes make like a half a dozen sets a year or something and they're thousands of dollars. It's just I want I want a set really badly. I could order you a set of Chinese chisels from Timu. First of all, I don't want Chinese chisels. <laughs> and I don't want anything from Timu. I don't want anybody to buy anything from Timu. I would like for Timu to not exist. You have an Asian woodchuck. I know. But is it though? Is that what it actually is? Because it's not really a woodchuck. It's not fit for purpose. I have some lathe tools that say made in China. Yeah, I think I, I probably, I have many, many things that say made in China. I don't have to like it. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to get off on a... All my lathe tools are made in Plano, Texas. Yeah, they are. But the materials that you sourced... <laughs> I was actually, okay, I'm not going to complain about the box of free stuff that you sent. But at one point we were talking about you sending me a halt, like a, a corner, a, an undercut scraper thing made out of an Allen key. And I was hoping that that was in there when I was. <laughs> one day, ne ne whatever, whenever the next box comes. What are those called? The ones that... Hollower, I guess. Plano, Texas. Home of Frito-Lay and my ex-girlfriend from high school. Who, coincidentally, his name was also uh, Frito-Lay. Need to make me a router chisel, a little router plane that just a, a little router plane that just holds a chisel would be cool. 
I love that Veritas has many of their tools cast in Kentucky or somewhere around there. Apparently for decades it's been from the U.S. I I'm not sure I agree with you because they do have manufacturing plants in and around Ottawa, Ontario. I've never heard that they have anything cast in the U.S. It's, I, I'm not calling you a liar. I've just never heard that information. I was under the impression that they were almost 100% created in Canada. They machine and assembly in CA. I hope that means Canada and not California. <laughs> Because I, I believe CA is also the abbreviation for California, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that they do all of their manufacturing in and around Ottawa. Possibly have a plant across the river in Hull. Miguel, are you around? Can you shed some light on this? I think you. I think Miguel said that he went and toured one of the factories. It's where the seconds come from. Yeah, the factory seconds that I get from Lee Valley are actually from Timo. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, my God. Last part of last year. Didn't have a ton of time to make tools, but I'll get you one. Oh, yeah. I'm half kidding. I mean, we did talk about it, and that I wasn't really disappointed because the rest, of, like, the box that you sent was awesome. But at the same time, I was like, after it was actually after I opened it and looked at it on the show, and I was like, Oh, wasn't there supposed to? Wasn't there going to be a? <laughs> I haven't toured, but I know people who work there. Okay, and the retail store in Ottawa is head off. Yeah, I mean, like it is, it is as Canadian, honestly, at this point, I think Lee Valley is as Canadian a company as you can get in terms of a company that size. And I was under the impression that all of their Veritas line of tools was completely manufactured in Canada. I watched a tour of the Gibson factory in Nashville this week. Super interesting to see how they make it all in-house. Sweet, yeah, right on. Or you could put all our names in a hat to draw one and send it to them instead of Mike since he's whining. <laughs> I think whining is an overstatement of what's happening right now. I did enjoy how last week um, when I was opening the box of Paul Waldrop gifts, uh, everyone was like, hey, Paul, why don't you send, why don't you, the next time you're going to do this, why don't you just let us bid on this stuff instead of sending it to him? Like, don't, don't come to my channel and then try to poach my gifts. Like, no, don't send that to him. Sell it to me. I'll give you $3. He'll give you nothing. <laughs> Come on. It's all just scrap wood. Yeah, because Paul's fancy pants. So, like, the stuff that he sent to me, it's just, basically, it's his garbage. I mean, it must be nice, eh? To have that be your garbage. 
Like, I chopped up my garbage tonight. You guys saw what I was chopping up in terms of garbage. It's not even garbage. It's like, I consider that piece of walnut that I was chopping up like a pretty nice piece of walnut to make little pen blanks. Paul's garbage is like spouted, stabilized, double-dyed mammoth tusk and shit. Like... Spalt. You know what I mean. Oh, best part of my week. Tell these you gotta be made from primo woods. It's true. Telecasters are have to be made from primo woods, like. Pallets you've sourced from the side of the road. Um, and dead cedar you dragged out of the woods. <laughs> Would love to turn some double dyed mammoth tusks. Well, you need to hit up Paul. I think I might have his last chunk. Beer. Possibly Tuesday. This Tuesday we might do a, a Tuesday actually make and stuff show where we get back into the guitar and open up that back electronics cavity and be one step closer on that it's I still very much like it but it, I need to get them off I need to get them off the list and it's it's at that turning point where it's like it's close but not close enough where it's like you, you it feels like it's almost done but it's really not but it looks it's like when you when you you, you do your first dry fit assembly of a piece of furniture that's just a carcass and some legs or whatever and it doesn't have drawers or drawer fronts or anything like that and you're like oh look it's a piece of furniture no you know it isn't That's where the guitar is right now. Ooh, high production quality Tuesday. Yep, yep. It's a the Tuesday show. When the Tuesday show happens, it is a it is a high production quality show for sure. There's McGill. Yeah, McGill's been here for a bit. Todd, keep up, my friend. Vineyard Farmhouse. Brian's back. Didn't catch Brian's live show last week, but I did watch it after the fact. Brian's going on a road trip down to like a a YouTube camp out. It sounds fun, and I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> it's like a U YouTubers getting together at a campground in somewhere Tennessee. I didn't catch actually where it was. Um, but and they're all going to camp out in this big campground and have a weekend of, of hangout. Mall of America. No, it's a, it's down so somewhere, I think. So funny hearing this channel ending sentences with a... Do I end sentences with A? A? Maybe? I don't know. It is, and you can go. It's in Oklahoma. No, I cannot. We've talked about this, Brian. 
I am not allowed to travel to your country. <laughs> I assume I should I should probably look into it. I've just uh, I've lived my life on the assumption Because I was told a long, long time ago, long, long time ago, well, I can still remember being told you can't travel to the States. When I can't remember if I cry, no, I can remember I didn't cry. Something touched me deep inside. <laughs> Where's my toque? Where's your toque hoser? It's in the house. Yeah, there's a shop. I think now I'm going to smoke. I'm just because if I leave the garage door, I can smoke whenever I want. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to, honestly, I wouldn't be able to afford to go even if I was allowed. Because uh, we've talked about it before, I am not a wealthy man. And a lot of times, YouTube takes my money. They might do it tonight, too, because I did, like, three lines of American Pie. And they're going to call it copyright infringement. You can apply to the Canadian government to get it waived or whatever the word is. Yeah, I, well, I could get a pardon. But that itself costs a bunch of money. Because I did at one point look into that. And I was like, well, that's not even really... Like, first of all, it's going to be expensive to go. And then second of all, I have to spend a bunch of money to just be allowed to go. Maybe I'll get a work permit or something. Can I just, like, I can apply to go down there and do some journalism or something, maybe, on a grant? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just take the ferry to Washington? I'm pretty sure that there's a border check there in between either getting on or coming off. Like, relatively sure that they check your identification <laughs> in some capacity. You're on Vancouver Island, one ferry trip. I know, I know how close I am. It's not a matter of proximity. You never told us why you can't actually come to the U.S. Oh, I did. You might not have been here for it, but I absolutely did. Did you pee on the Alamo like Ozzy did? No. No, I didn't because I've never been to the Alamo. Did Ozzy pee on the Alamo? That's that's pretty funny, actually. Um, let's just say that I am not allowed in the States because at one point I was convicted of a federal criminal offense and I have I'm a felon let's, let's just I'm a felon from way back It's unfortunate. I made the ever. We've all made terrible decisions in our lives, and one of the terrible decisions that I made lives with me forever. And it's not. It wasn't. It's not like I murdered or anything. Like it was almost harmless. 
but it was a federal criminal offense. went to the federal penitentiary. They do really, really bad eggs. Really bad eggs in the federal penitentiary system. It's not a pardon, it's a record suspension. Ooh. Pinnell's doing research for me. I can get a record suspension to be allowed to travel to the U.S. I still can't afford it. So, it, it, I mean, like, that's that's why I've never bothered to, like, try. Because I can't afford to go anyway. <clears throat> I was convicted at 15, but I got thrown out when I turned 18. Well, all of our youth, <laughs> all of our youth convictions don't really count. Because when you turn 18, become an adult, those all just kind of, they don't disappear, but they don't count anymore. Unfortunately, I had one after that. So you get for downloading via Napster. It was actually LimeWire. Rather come to Vancouver anyhow. I honestly, at this point, I probably can't even afford to meet you in Vancouver, my friend. You know, you gotta come right over to my island. Hey, Bailey Wordworks is here. Bailey made a cool um, paperweight. What? What's the? What was the? It's just a circle. It's just a sphere-ish thing out of a chunk of cherry. Looked like just a piece of firewood. But it was cool. And it looks pretty. But I was like, what's he making? The whole time I was like, what's he making? And then it was just a circle. I was like, okay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with just making the... Making a circle? Bailey made a ball and Mike likes it. He's not wrong. Tim's not wrong. That's what happened. He chucked up a chunk of cherry. He made it into a ball. I enjoyed it. There's nothing wrong with that. But the, the whole time you were making it, I was thinking like, is he going to hollow it out? Is it going to hold something? Is he going to put it on another thing? No, it was just a ball. I was like, all right, right on. Heck of a way of describing it. What was it, Bailey? I am also curious to know, like, was it, did you make it for a purpose or were you just like, I'm going to chuck up this piece of wood and that it turned into a ball and you were like, hey, that's pretty. Because it was. It was pretty. And he, he, it wasn't Starbond, though. He CA finished it, but it wasn't Starbond, which is boo. <laughs> Bailey, if you're interested in actually using some proper CA glue, there's a link in the description. Um, we can, we can get you some decent, some decent CA glue. It's okay. All right, Tim will be back. He's got to go get a new bourbon. Bought one of those sphere making lathe tools about six years ago. It's still in the box. What's this sphere making lathe tools? Is it just like sort of a trammel arm type thing that it has a pivot point? 
Or are you talking about the like sort of like cup jaw things where you like you turn it a little bit and then you swivel it within the little cups? Yep, he says. All right, I'm going to let that catch up for a second. Uh, it has the cup jaws and the arm. Oh, okay, so both. Paul's waiting to do the unboxing video. That was okay. That was all right. That was not, not bad. Not bad. I mean... It is throat punch worthy, but I know that it's in that it's just in good fun and that we are actually friends and that he knows that I can take it, but he's still really, really mean to me. Just subscribe to your channel, Bailey. You can check it out tomorrow. He's got a ton of videos. You, you take your time. Is there really a difference in CA glue? I, I, yes. I'm partially joking because there isn't, in some ways there isn't, but it, I'm, I'm taking, the, I'm doing a little bit of a Joshin type, type situation because I am sponsored, I am supported by Starbond, the CA glue company is a supporter of my channel. So I'm, I'm kind of being facetious about it. Um, but yes, there is definitely a difference in CA glues in terms of the quality of their performance and things. Uh, the one that he was using is fine. It's, it's, it's a decent product. It's you know, like super T I believe is what he was using. I have used that in the past. It's, it's good. It's fine. I was being facetious in that I am supported by Starbond. They are, they help my channel. They send me free glue. They give me a discount code to give to people. And when people use that discount code and my affiliate link, I do get a small percentage of that sale um, given to me. It's really not very much money. <laughs> So, it, I'm I'm not as invested in Starbond as I make it seem like I am, but it is a very very high quality CA glue. Don't buy cheap garbage CA glue at the dollar store though. Like buy quality CA glue, whether it's Starbond or Super T, or uh, Miter Bond is okay. I don't like it as much as either of those other options. Do they give me some free for support? I haven't paid for CA glue for three years. I am a good Starbond CA glue is the only CA glue I use in my shop and it's, I've never paid for it. And they are, they were the second company ever that reached out to me and said, hey, can we send you some of our product for free? And I appreciated that as a guy that had, at the time, I think I maybe had 3,000 subscribers or something. And they found me and reached out and said, hey, we'd like to send you some glue. Would you like to try it? And I said, you're damn right I would. Thank you very much. And then they gave me the affiliate system and all that stuff. So. Well, I'll have to start a channel to get some free. Yeah, it only took four. It only took four years of a video a week. You just make a couple hundred YouTube videos, and then you might get some free glue. <laughs> I know you. I know you're new here. YouTube is a is a losing proposition if you're trying to use it to actually like 
get free stuff or make money. Just subbed Bailey Woodworks. So how come you're not hawking cheap CA glue and begging for handouts on Patreon? It's a good question. I'll let him answer. It's a, it's a valid question. Why does why doesn't he why doesn't he beg for money? Like he probably he probably gets paid more than he should for his real job. So he doesn't have to beg for support from people for his side job. I don't know. Also, Paul's really mean to me. Well, uh, as well, like like my friends are really not very nice. I remember, remember that time you were super excited about them emailing you. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Why did you have to do that? Why? Why? Remember that time you were super excited about them emailing you and I guess Starbond right away because I'd just seen another small channel post about Starbond. I do remember that. I, Because back when I thought that Pinnell and I were friends, um, I messaged him and I was like, dude, I just got an offer to to get free, to get a, like a free affiliate situation and free product. And the, like, that's, that's rad. And he was like, is it Starbond glue? I'm like, and my face did that as soon as I, I was like, because apparently they were just like throwing these affiliate things out to anybody. And he was like, yeah, you and everybody else don't think that you're special. Basically is what he was saying. And I was like having a pretty good day. And he was like, yeah, no, actually, uh, they just, uh, they just give that shit to everybody. So mm. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, right. Thanks, friend. Here. be like if like if if uh if you like trained for a few years and worked really hard at something for a few years and then you got third place in like the competition for the thing that you were training really hard in and working at and you told your friend like my first competition, I got third place, and he was like, well, that means two people were better than you. Instead of like, hey, congratulations. No. Jeez, like, the two people were better than you. Thanks, friend. <laughs> like badminton yeah like badminton exactly like badminton i was the second best badminton player in saskatchewan in my grade 12 year in my grade 11 year i was this in my grade 11 year i was the second best high school badminton player in the province of saskatchewan third and I was the third best it was a long time ago okay <coughs> remember I did two or three videos for GGBO and got an offer to do a video for NordVPN I do remember that I do remember you getting an offer to to get a paid video from NordVPN after putting three videos up on a YouTube channel. I do remember that. Honestly, I don't know that I would take a NordVPN sponsorship anyway.
Isn't that the lowest populated area? Todd, the, the lowest populated area actually um, is, I, God, I, there should have been, I could have, should have been able to come up with something and I just couldn't. Uh, Saskatchewan does not have a huge population. This is true. But the number of high school badminton players in Saskatchewan at that time was probably 600. I mean, if you think about each, like each town's high school, like ours had a dozen. There's a lot of towns and cities and so I mean, you know, between 500 and 1,000 badminton players. And I was number two or three. That's pretty good. Like the Regina and Saskatchewan probably each had a couple hundred. Or Regina and Saskatoon. And then a dozen from Moose Jaw and Swift Current and Prince Albert. And you know, they were, let's say 500. Let's say 500. And I was number two or three. Why, why go? Why won't you guys just let me like feel good about myself for a minute? <laughs> what, like even historically, you won't even let me feel good about myself historically. Like, how, why don't don't think that you were good in the past? Why can't yeah, yeah, you like you think? Let me think that I like have these memories that I'm proud of. That's that's next level bad friending. That's that's damn. <laughs> the next box I can send you all my unused bottles of CA glue from Starbond. I I mean I don't need them. You can just use them. They're good. I don't need honestly I don't need any more bottles of Starbond glue. I have a, a full box of all of the thick nye and co consistencies and colors in the house. My teriyaki video is awesome, Mike. Thanks, Tim. It's not as good as French onion soup. Which Pinnell knows will never admit. Pinnell will never admit, but he knows that I'm the reason that he has a new favorite food. Sorry, I had to leave for a second. Were you talking about my word <laughs> wood bubbles? I was talking about your wood bubbles. I was asking you what the purpose was for it. Not in a negative connotation. I was just like, the whole time you were making it, I was going like, what's he making? Is he was like, is, is it getting hollowed out? Is he putting a hole in it for something? Is it like, what is he making? And then it was just a bubble. And I, I was like, okay. I mean, it's still cool. It's still great. It looks rad. But the whole time I was like, what's he making? So what were you making or was it just like turning practice and here's a sphere and then we got into a, a fight about 
uh, C8 Lou and how you were using not the right one because I am star bond supported and it disappoints me to see people not using, <laughs> but then it became a whole thing about sponsorship packages and it was going to be a hollow form, but it looked so good. I couldn't cut into it. But that doesn't make sense to me because it wouldn't have affected the look of, were you worried about destroying it? Were you scareds? It's fine to be scareds. But I'm thinking, like, it wouldn't have changed the look if you would have hollowed it out. But sometimes, sometimes a feared is, uh, is a perfectly valid reason to just leave something alone. I tell people that during my paint night classes. It's like, as soon as you're pretty okay with this, with what it looks like on this step, stop. Because if you keep... If you keep trying to make it look better, you will end up making it look worse and you will have wished you stopped. So when you're pretty okay with it, stop and wait for the next step. Because you can absolutely overwork something and make it less good than what it was a couple minutes ago. A big chunk of fossilized amber that has some bugs in it would make rad bottle stoppers and dinosaurs. Because if there's one thing that that documentary taught me, it's that you can extract dinosaur DNA from fossilized bugs. No, I have three of them, so it was pretty much planned. <laughs> there you go. They're pretty. They're pretty. And it's, I mean, it's just fun. It's, you're right. It's fun to just turn. And they will be like, whatever. They're cool little cherry baubles that you're going to just have laying around. But like I said, as you were turning it, I was like, what's he making? What's he making? Oh, it's a, it's a circle. Like it would I don't want to say I was disappointed, but at the end I was like, okay, I guess it's a, I guess a, a, it's a sphere. Don't, don't make dinosaurs. We've been over this. Paul is harboring dinosaur DNA in amber. You did get at least, uh, during the conversation, you, you got a few more subs. You're welcome. <laughs> I used to be subscribed, Bailey. I still am, but I used to be too. That's, I feel like, I feel like you overused that particular joke. And also that you're a terrible, terrible friend. <laughs> uh. <sighs> My favorite part of the week. I did say, I did say that we're going to wrap things up earlier tonight than sometimes. It is a good joke. It is a good joke. They <laughs> do. In what world would I need a receipt for a donut? <laughs> Why would I ever need to prove that I bought a donut? He was a funny guy. He, he was a funny guy. Mike, I think you are subbed to another YouTube channel that I support. More information required. 
It's entirely possible. I'm not subscribed to a lot of YouTube channels. Um, I downloaded that CD from Napster. <laughs> I just watch it. I just watched it for free on YouTube. The pirated version of his special. If you need to return the donut, lack of filling. So it feels like Tim might not know the routine. It might know it might, this might be going over some people's heads. Unless I just missed that line in that routine. I think I think maybe Tim's maybe Tim isn't in. It, uh, he was a funny guy and he did some good shows and then he died too early. And tonight, after I stop being live on YouTube, I might just go watch some more. He's he's funny. Does anybody else feel this way that it's like... Uh, Things that you enjoy or used to enjoy. Let's just hypothetically. But that, that person is no longer around. It makes you happy sad to enjoy it still. Like when I listen to Soundgarden. I, it makes me happy sad. Like, Chris Cornell was a beauty and one of the top talents, top vocal talents, maybe in rock and roll history. Yeah, absolutely in rock and roll history. And it's so, like, I still love listening to him, but in, it, it also makes me sad. It's like Mitch and... Guys like Chris Cornell, Kurt, not so much, um, but I get a little bit like Dolores Claiborne, um, like people you wish you still had. And you still love and acknowledge that they've done wonderful things, but it makes you sad to be nostalgic. Like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Good story, Mike. <laughs> well, I'll catch you all later. All right. Bye, Y Travel. We're here every week. Sometimes we make stuff. Sometimes we, we don't. You're always welcome. You seem you seem like a good dude. Norm McDonald, yeah, same kind of thing. Chris and Chester, him here, yeah. Uh, I've had a few. I get that way a little bit with um, I was I was never big. I was never a big Lincoln Park because I didn't really know how good they were because I only ever heard the radio songs and it and it wasn't actually until he was gone that a friend of mine recommended me that I listen to some of the other stuff and I and I suddenly recognized what we had lost but like I mean I have a hard time listening to one of my favorite bands of all time because it makes me sad that that's not a thing that can happen anymore. When Gord left, I cried a lot. <laughs> I cried a lot. I still cry a lot about Gord leaving. Um, 
I might cry right now about Gord leaving. But it still makes me happy that we have that in our world. It makes me happy that we have been fortunate enough to have that person exist and do what they've done. Sean Locke was such a great comedian. I don't, I don't know him. I don't, I'm. I was. Ne I'm not. Never really been a big comedian's person. Sometimes one of them would grab me and be awesome, but never really followed comedians and, and comedy. Coming full circle, Chester Chester sang for Stone Temple Pilots. That's the band that Chris Pinnell just found out about like last week. So was it this week that you found out that Chester sang for them at one point? Or did Chester sing... Oh, shit. Did Chester sing for STP after Chris was gone? Please do and don't send me that YouTube video. <laughs> Can hit the sack. All right. Later, Paul. Thanks for coming again, my friend. That would make a lot of sense that Chester would step in and sing for Stone Temple Pilots after Scott left. Scott was a talented guy, too. I don't feel that way about STP the same way I feel about Soundgarden and Chris Cornell. Anyway, I feel like I'm being a bummer now, and I don't want to put a downer on the show, because this is my favorite night of the week. Hanging out with my friends on the internet. <laughs> starting to cool off though might close the door oh yeah i just put this back on <laughs> this is my friend um sean no no it's not brad it's my friend Really, really good friend, obviously. I can't remember his name. His name is Brad Bruff. Idiot. Or the who behind Blue Eyes. Are you, like, making requests now? <laughs> the guitar is just over there. I don't think I want to tonight. I think that would be bad. I think that would be bad news for the turning class that I have to teach tomorrow if I stayed up playing guitar on the internet for another two hours. I also didn't have a fully charged phone before I started tonight, so I'm at about thirty percent and I don't have another I don't have another hour and a half of capacity. Either phone capacity or mental state capacity, I don't think. Can't you charge while recording? Nope, I can't. Because it has to sit on a wireless charger. Because it doesn't... Actually, I did blow out... Let me see. I did get the air gun. The canned air. Down at the shop earlier this week to just see 
if I could just get the dust out of the charging port. But I think it's just like misaligned and it's like wonky. And I can't actually get a cord into the charge port anymore. Yeah, it just doesn't actually go in. So it has to actually sit on a charger. Get a wireless charging desk stand. I could probably just make one of those, but I'm I'm past due for a new phone anyway. So I'm just gonna do that instead. I'm <laughs> just eh, just buy a new one. This phone doesn't owe me anything. I think this one was. I, well, it was, it's a Samsung S20, and it was, like, just released that month. So, you tell me when I got this. It's got to be four years, three at least years of a lot of use. No, it had it had asked to be four years because it was absolutely pre COVID. But no, I could keep I could keep going, but it would you guys would be just staring at the ceiling. feel like you got a new phone while doing this show yeah but I feel like I've been doing this show for more than four years I don't know you Penel, you're in front of the computer look up when the Samsung s20 was released because I got this phone that month here Maybe one song on the guitar? I don't know. I don't think so tonight. Kind of, I kind of want to. 2020 around February. Okay, so I'm four years into this phone. That's pretty good. What would I play if I played a song? March 6th, 2020. So I'm four years into this phone. I don't think they're designed to do that. How many hours have I sat here watching you just because I watched a Laguna Lave review? And it wasn't even a review. Like I took it out of the box and put it on a stand. <laughs> it wasn't even good. <laughs> I am going to do... Now that I have the... the Well, I don't. Nadia has the Rikon comparable. Not the VSR. Um, but... I am going to do a compare and contrast between the two lathes that I teach on, which will probably serve as a review for the Laguna 1216. Because I don't think that one does serve as a review for that. Because I don't think I even used it in that video. I should do, like, I've used this lathe. This lathe has a couple hundred hours on it now. This is how I feel about it. Review. Maybe it will. Maybe Mikey B will come over and we'll shoot that. It'll be the second best video of the year. He'll shoot the we'll shoot the Laguna 
three years in, I don't know, I'll look it up. But like the three years into using this, do does do I like it? And actually give people some decent information <laughs> about about the lathe. Oh, maybe I am gonna compare and contrast the Rikon with the Laguna during the the show that I'm filming right now. I did the unboxing and setup part of the video. And then I just have to do the follow-up talky part. I'm going to go urinate beside my house. I think that might have some value i'm going to try to add a little bit of like what to consider when purchasing your first lathe type stuff but i don't want it to go for half an hour so we'll see think how much better you would be at turning if you never watched that video todd it's a good point well how think about better yet Think about how much of your life you would have back. Like, if you never watched that video and then never found this live show because you watched that video, think about the, the just the number of hours of your life that you would have back that could have you could have done other things with. That's... Thanks, Pinnell. A good friend. <laughs> Not by the time you come on, it's 9 p.m. here. Yeah, but all the, like, 9 to midnights that you could have had back to do other things. All those other things that you would have done, I don't know. I think this is a good use of your time, and I disagree with Pinnell. And so there. You've made you've made new friends in your life. I think this is a good use. This is a good use of your time. It's a good way to have my lunch and a few bourbons on a Sunday. There you go. There you go. I, this is the best part of my week. <sighs> I should get the guitar. Should I get the guitar? What song would I play? If I was just going to play one song tonight. Uh, it would be, oh, I know what it would be. <laughs> Damn it. And it'll be... It'd be a good way to cap off the show. It'd be Chester. I've met Paul, Fearsome, Tim, and others. This is true. This is true. I'm about to head in whether you grab a guitar or not. <laughs> sure. Sure you are. Actually, he likes that song. That's one of the that's one of the ones he actually likes when I play. I don't think I will. 
I think I think tonight we'll we'll just skip we'll skip the guitar and uh, we will just have had a good evening with each other. Yeah, I don't even like playing to it sometimes. I just want to listen to it being played. Yeah. Yeah. And I I do... It's one of those songs that I do think that our version of... Not, I wouldn't say better, but certainly, certainly different and good. Heck, when I first started watching, I didn't know what a Chuck was. But he learned. Look at, look at everybody. Todd came here and learned. <laughs> How's the band going? The the band is. We haven't played for just about a month now, and they don't like it when I call it a band. And I don't disagree with them. We're not really a band. We're just, we're just guys who hang out in the garage and make music sometimes. We have, we enjoy each other's company and, and make some noise and sometimes it sounds pretty cool. Jam group. I wouldn't call us that either. We just we're friends who all play an instrument and when we hang out we play those instruments. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it ends up sounding pretty good. Playmates. Uh that sounds weird. I don't want to call us that. I learned what a Chuck was from William Ng. Don't know too much about William Ng. I've heard the name, and I know that he's a well-respected individual within the woodworking community. I'm not going to play tonight, because I don't want to play that song out of tune. And last time I played, I was not a fan of how in tune my guitar was. And I can't tune it while my tuner is in use producing a YouTube video. So, I'm not going to play tonight. As much as I would like to. I think he just retired and closed the school. He hangs out either his boyfriends in the garage and they play with each other. Well, that was terrible English. And I think I get what you were trying to make the joke, but you failed at it by sucking at typing. So... Everything sold. Yeah, I think that. Hey, I bet he's still making fantastic furniture, though. Good for him. Not everyone gets the privilege to retire. Yep. Yeah, and I bet. I bet he's still, even though he's retired, I bet he's still making fantastic furniture. It's like, like Chris and Bexford. I think he's, re technically he's might be retired because he's, I don't think he's taking any more orders. <laughs> but he probably still has like a couple years worth of furniture that he has committed himself to. But it, he's also at the point where he can just like, yeah, you'll get it eventually.
All right, folks, he's out of here. Later, Bennett. Maybe we'll jam this week. Maybe Monday night we'll actually play. It's been a month, exactly. This, if, because I bailed, and then Seth bailed, and then I bailed, and then you bailed. Yeah, it's been a month. We used to, we were playing weekly for like a good six months, just about. We're going to be awful. No, that's the opposite. So do like every time we miss a few weeks, we come back and just absolutely murderize it. And it, and it's sick. Like it's the wrong attitude. CB has been doing donation pace pieces lately. Right now, two draw, three point two donation pieces for like for fundraising. For yeah, he just seems like one of the best humans ever. <laughs> he probably is spending hundreds of hours on a piece of furniture to donate for a fundraiser. Just picking strawberries from the field and sitting on his porch. I I could hang out with that guy. Just sit on his porch and just whittle and eat strawberries from the field. Talk about making furniture. Yeah. That sounds pretty okay. <laughs> I think let's wrap this one up. We'll keep it under three hours tonight. Sounds crazy, but sometimes the show goes four. Let's bid you adieu. I'll see you next week or maybe on Tuesday. It depends how I feel on Tuesday, whether we do something. Um... I do want to keep working on the guitars and get those off my list. Have fun tomorrow. Thanks, Sean. I'm sure it'll be fun. Get four more people into turning. Yeah, at least five more handcrafted pens out into the world. It'll make for a good day. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, everybody. We will see you either on Tuesday. There will be no announcement made <laughs> about whether Tuesday happens. It'll be like, okay, all of a sudden he's live on Tuesday making guitar, um, if it happens. If not, we'll see you next Saturday for another one of these. Bye for now. Thanks.